Hey, all my upright and caffeinated sysadmins. Yep, that's me, upright and caffeinated today. I'm gonna to take you through building custom tools in PDQ Inventory. This is an amazing feature because you can build something you use on a regular basis and it makes your life significantly easier. So let's jump into this. Okay, first of all, how do you create a custom tool or what is a custom tool? If you go to our tools library, you go to customize, so these are your custom tools. If you open up, let's say, look, look at the open admin dollar share tool. If you hit edit, you can see that we have built a custom tool to basically open the admin dollar on a remote machine. Now, here's the thing. You're going to call, whether it's a local call or a remote call, and you're going to run PowerShell or DOS, or uh, DOS. Man, I can't even, that, that ages me, right? Or command line stuff, right? So we're going to put it here couple of things you need to know. So let's just kind of run through. We'll build a new one. We're going to build a tool that does basically it's window stat. We're going to go look at drive size and a breakdown of drive size on the machines that we highlight. So we're going to build a new tool. So we'll go to new, new tool. And here is the tools edit mode. So what we're going to do is we'll call this, uh, this tool called drive space. Okay, specifically C drive is what we're going to look at. Now, Things you gotta know, we're gonna kinda of run from the top to the bottom here. Run type, okay, some options here. Are you gonna run it remote? So are we gonna run a command on the remote machine? Say like uh, uninstall or a, a script that needs to be run on the end user's machine, or, or is it gonna be local? In this case, Winterstat is gonna be local on our machine and then we'll point it, we'll run it from our machine, point it at the machine uh, or system. And basically a system type is where well, the system, it's a, uh, similar to local and basically the key difference is systems designed to only run locally on this system specifically so in this case we're going to do local okay run as okay credentialed user we're going to stick with that now here under command we've got a couple options you can either run a command you know command steps basically or powershell in this case we're going to run powershell okay here is where we're going to put the command that's going to kick off winderstat and we're gonna use some variables um, so that we can reference the highlighted machine. So I'm gonna paste this in, this is a little bit long. I'm gonna paste in the command and we're gonna go through it. So in this case, we're gonna start the process and put the file path, and this is obviously PowerShell. The file path is C, program files x86, Winderstat, and it's Winderstat exe. Now you'll notice right here, this dollar sign computer target host name, okay? Where you pick up your Variables is right here, target, target, host name, okay? All you've got to do is put that where you want it. We'll say we wanted that on the end, and then I would select, we'll just go and select, you know, computer target, and you'll notice it appended it right where the cursor was. Uh, I don't need it in this case, so we'll get rid of that extra variable, but just want to show you how that works. And basically, we're going to run Winderstat, back, whack, whack, the name of the target host name of the computer in the C dollars in this case, so drive space for your... C dollar, okay? Now, rolling down the list, right? We can run this, okay, so the shell, right? Options here. Tool window, which captures the output. No shell, which ignores the output, right? Close shell on completion, so it'll start it. This is gonna run the command and then close the shell, right? Or you can leave the shell open. In this case, we're just kicking off Winderstat. When it runs, it's gonna go connect to the computer. So in this case, we're gonna close the shell on completion. Um, then you got some options here, timeout, right? If you're going to run something and it's going to run for an amount of time, you could, and this is on remote machines, set the timeout, okay? Also, you can capture success codes and scan after if it's something you're running on a remote machine. But as this is being local, we're going to use the console credentials here, okay? Whatever we said in the console, that's what we're going to use, okay? And then you could also pick a different icon. We're going to put this uh, really cool... I don't know, disky looking thing here. Maybe that's a database looking thing. I'm calling it a disky looking thing at this point. And then you can put a shortcut. So let's do a control alt and the letter, uh, maybe control shift D for drive space, control shift D. Now we save that, okay? To test this, we'll go up and we'll go look at my computers, right? Now Bugs Bunny, we'll highlight it, right click. You can go to tools. And you know, drive space right there, drive space C dollars, control shift D. I can hit that or I can select it here. There it is, it just kicked off Winderstat. You can see there's the breakdown of the machine, Bugs Bunny C drive. All that 
just from a tool. Again, let me close this out. We're gonna go to the machine Conrad and hit Control Shift D, the keystroke method. There you go, it opens it up. So things to think about, you know, takeaways from this. You, if you've got scripts that you run on a regular basis for maintenance or something you just wanna be able to run rapidly with a, you know, a key combination, build a tool, okay? It makes it real easy, again, you can list, you know, you can uh, feed computer information, highlighted computer information from variables. It works out great, as you can see. Hey, this video goes hand in hand with one that Brock wrote. It's an amazing one. It goes over Team Viewer, how to do a Team Viewer tool. It goes over, obviously, you know, um, Winderstat and one other. So read that. It's a great one. Thanks for watching. I'm Lex from PDT.com.